All right, so you're... All right, so you're looking into how to prepare for the initial screening uh, or written exam, which is the second phase of the IUHW School of Medicine scholarship process. Uh, well, first, before you can even take the written exam, you must pass the first phase, which is just submitting applications for the scholarship. And the two important things about the first phase is uh, you show your level of English by IELTS or something. I showed with my IGCSEs. And secondly, you have to write an essay about reasons for applying. If you've passed that and you've been selected, for Cambodia, uh, and my year, they only chose eight students. I think also the previous year, they also chose only eight students. If you were one of the selected students, congratulations. Now you have to worry about this uh, second phase. I believe that this phase is the most crucial. Uh, if you can get a high score relative to your peers, I think you have a good chance of um, achieving the scholarship. So please try your hardest for this phase. All right, so first an overview of the exam. Now as scholarship students, you will take the exam in the English language. I believe you can also choose to do it in Japanese if, if you're confident, but I think most of you, including myself, would choose English. The test papers will be in the same format as the EJU exam. And if you don't know EJU, EJU stands for, what does it stand for again? Oh. Examination for Japanese University Admission for International Students, right? Basically, it's a standardized test that international students take in order to uh, apply for uh, admissions in Japanese universities. So what does this mean? It means uh, all the exam questions will be in multiple choice format or MCQ. During each section of the exam, you will be given two papers. One is a test paper with all the questions and you can write anything on it, but they won't mark it. And you have another paper, which is the answer sheet in which you know you, you, you use a pencil to, to shade in the correct answer of the multiple choice questions. So there are three sections to this written exam. Uh, first section is mathematics and it will last for 80 minutes. So one hour and 20 minutes in English and MCQ format. Second section is a science section. Now, you will be given a test paper with questions coming from physics, chemistry, and biology. However, you are only required to do two. So right now, choose between those three subjects which two you want to do. Uh, I think for most of us, including myself, we chose um, biology and chemistry. If you're confident with physics, choose physics. So the science test will last for 80 minutes and you can partition those 80 minutes however you like for your subject. So you could do 40 minutes for biology and 40 minutes for chemistry or how I did it since I was better at chemistry than I was with bio. I spent 35 minutes on chemistry and 45 minutes on biology. Uh, but you could do it however you want. All it is is you have 80 minutes and you have to uh, do two subjects only. And lastly is the English section, which will last for 50 minutes. Now, since it will be an MCQ format, there is no writing. Uh, there's no listening as well. All you have to care about is grammar and um, reading. Basically, it's grammar sessions, more grammar sessions and reading. Now let's talk about the main resources that you will need to prepare for this exam. There are two main resources. One is the EJU past papers because it's in the same format as EJU. Second is the MEX past papers, M-E-X-T. Um, for MEX, you gotta do the undergraduate level. So, so I think the IUHW exam is sort of like in between, in terms of difficulty, in between the EJU uh, and the MEX undergraduate level. It's sort of in between. It's a little bit harder, I think, or maybe I was just under pressure, I'm not sure, but I believe it's a bit harder than the EJU past papers. So I will provide the links to the website which provides the past papers for EJU, which is the JASO website, 
and Max, which I think is just the Max website. So you can look into this website and uh, uh, look at their past papers. Uh, first, you should focus all your time on doing all of the EJU past papers for math, science, there's, there's no English, so just for math, science. Um, once you finish all the EJU past papers, then if you have time, you can start doing the uh, max uh, undergraduate level math and science past papers. For English, um, EJU doesn't have uh, English tests as far as I know from the website, uh, but max do, so you can do uh, the past papers, uh, English past papers from the max website. But uh, for me personally, when I prepared, I managed to finish uh, all the EJU past papers for maths, uh, science, and I did some uh, max past papers for biology, and I did all of its English past papers. I spent most of my time on biology and chemistry, and I spent the least amount of time on English. So a quick note, before you start doing the EJU past papers, I would like you to go ahead and have a read on the EJU syllabus. So go to the JASA website and click on any one of the years and the 2018 first session. Go to the EJU syllabus and read. Uh, so there's a syllabus for math, syllabus for physics, chemistry, biology. Um, read the ones that you're going to take. Uh, don't focus on them too much though. Just have a skim through it so you know what to expect. Now, to be honest, I didn't actually know of the EJU syllabus. I only knew about it once I finished my preparation, which is quite funny. I was preparing the whole thing blindly without knowing what to expect. So if you have a look at the EJU past papers for mathematics, if you, if you click on one or any one of the math past papers, you will see that there's two sections. One is a basic course and second one is an advanced course. If you think you have time, please do both of them. Basic course and advanced course. If, you, if, you, if you're kind of short on time, then just focus on the advanced course because I believe that in the real exam, it is either equivalent or a bit harder than the advanced course. All right, now I wanna talk about math books. Um, when I was preparing, didn't really use the math books that much. So you're going to use these books for reference. Firstly, uh, you should use your country's high school math textbook. Uh, that should be able to help you review some of the main, uh, main topics in math. Secondly is you should use the internet. I mean, just a quick search on the internet. I mean, you, you, you can get most stuff uh, out of the internet. And also, I'd recommend you check out this YouTube channel in which I forgot the name of Coco Yovian. This uh, Coco Yovian. Um, he, I think, solved most of the EJU, even the 2019 one. Wow. I don't think that's on the website, the JASA website. Uh, he also does mechs, I think. And you could you could check out his channel. I'll, I'll leave the link to his channel down below. Uh, he helped me with some of the problems. Uh, secondly, I'd like you to have a look at Z Notes. So I think you have to like sign up and then you. Uh, I used uh, A level uh, math Z Notes and further math Z Notes. They it's sort of like this high yield notes format of all the different formulas and the different uh, concepts you have to know. Uh, next is this book by uh, Serge Lang called A First Course in Calculus. I actually use this book to like review calculus because this book is, uh, it's not, it's not uh, in depth, uh, well, it's broad, it's not in depth and it has uh, a good amount of exercises, they're not too difficult, they're an excellent way to review calculus as a whole and it has answers at, at the back of the book so, so that's why I like it. Uh, next, you might encounter problems with number theory and for some of you, you've never really studied number theory before. So uh, I'd recommend you this book for methods of solving number theory problems. Um, 
you don't have to go too in depth if you have time just like read through it and look at the uh, the, the different properties of numbers the theories and all that you know just just touch just just, just touch on number theory next one is on geometry in fact you could get by with just your high school geometry formulas with some trigonometry as well but uh, you should review and focus on circles triangles so I recommend this book called Euclidean Geometry for uh, Math Olympiads. Um, the book is really advanced, but I like to uh, I like you to look at like the first section, the fundamentals. So angle chasing, uh, uh, circles. Some of them are really advanced, but some some of them are maybe overkill. But lengths and ratios, and you should look at yeah, law of sine. Uh, have a look through the whole book i've only used it a few times only just to help you know get my brain thinking of the different techniques i could use don't stress on this book too much because this book is way more advanced than you'll ever need but i think this is a good resource uh next thing um is shom's shom's i don't know outline for combinatorics uh, I did not use this book during preparation but the reason I'm recommending you to read a book on combinatorics you don't have to use this specific book this is just the one that I have in my PDF collection use uh, basically just study anything relating to combinatorics you know pigeon just 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 get a good grasp on you know principles of counting you know pigeonhole principle combination permutation do a lot of practice on that because I did not practice that part and I was doing the exam that was the problem that I sort of messed up. Another thing is you should look for books about complex numbers. I think your high school textbook should have good enough information for the complex numbers. Uh, complex numbers was I think the last problem of the exam I took and I Damn, it looked easy, but for some reason, I think under the pressure, I couldn't solve it. Damn, that sucks. When I did the exam, I managed to, I believe, I managed to nail the calculus problems. I did not nail the geometry, combinatorics, and complex numbers. That's why um, uh, I'm recommending these books for those three parts. The uh, next one, I'm, I want to talk about chemistry resources. So again, you should first uh, just use your high school, your your high school textbook chemistry. It has all the basic information you need. And then again, use the internet. The internet has everything, literally. And also watch YouTube videos for explaining the different concepts and topics. Uh, I also used Z Notes uh, for uh, A A level and A S level chemistry the same website for the math xenotes and I used the AP chemistry textbook which uh, use it as a reference you know so, so I could do extra reading and try my best to understand the different concepts oh and here's a tip you should try your best to memorize all the different rules and theories uh, I didn't really do that I sort of just skimmed through them but I didn't try and memorize them so I recommend you memorize understand them first and then memorize them uh, I would also like you to memorize the periodic table no not not the whole periodic table okay so first you should memorize the overall structure of the periodic table where are the transition metals where are the alkaline earth metals the halogens the noble gases relative to each other you should know the structure of the periodic table by heart and how to use it uh, secondly I'd like you to memorize the first group, the second group, the halogen, the halogen group, which is the seventh group. Uh, I'd also like you to memorize the first three rows of the periodic table as well. Uh, if you can memorize them, I think it can help you a lot. At least it helped me. I don't know. Maybe you study it different way, but I memorized uh, that part of the period periodic table, and it helped me a lot through my preparation. Now for biology. I don't know why, but I seem to suck at biology. When I was doing the EGU past papers for biology, oh my god. It was the most stressful time. I, like, I didn't know I had so many gaps in my knowledge for biology. 
So then again, apart from using your your high school textbook, biology, the internet, uh, and Z notes, Z notes, A level and AS level biology. I think the standard book that everybody uses is the Campbell Biology. I think this book covers pretty much everything in biology. So that's a good book to use as a reference for the different topics that you will encounter in the test papers. Uh, this other book I didn't know of until now. So this is like OpenStax uh, Biology. I only know about this um, right now as I'm taking the biology supplementary classes that they're offering and they use this book and when I look at this book I say hey this is pretty good uh, I wish I knew about this book when I was preparing because it covers pretty much all everything in biology which is which there's a lot okay all the textbooks I'm recommending you don't try to read everything just use them as I said as a reference just read the parts that you need and try and understand the concepts and uh, memorize some stuff as well so in the next video I'm gonna go a bit more in depth on how I use these resources and how I study and some tips and tricks along the way um, my way of studying may be different from your way of studying but I'm just sharing you my experiences. Uh, thanks for watching.